Hey everybody, how's it going? Aaron Rift here along with good old JM Jeff Meacham to talk about the top WWE dream matches that need to happen. These matches are matches that fans have been speculating about and talking about the possibility of happening and I think that these are matches that are at least in the realm of possibility of, ha of happening at some point. So first off, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, when you laid this out to me on text about top new matches need to happen, I went a totally different direction and was just being a comedy ass about it. I was thinking like, you know, Bart Gunn versus Chuck Palumbo, who, who truly was Billy Gunn's worst partner type thing. That, that needs to be determined. But since you're being serious, I'll go ahead and be serious with you. So go ahead. We'll go okay. Ahead. okay. All right. Well, I'll get started here with uh, Brock Lesnar, who is one of the biggest stars in the entire WWE universe and has been for the past several years. And there's a couple of big matches that Brock Lesnar can still be part of in WWE. Now that he has signed a new contract... You can get more matches out of him. And two matches I want to bring up, two possibilities for Brock Lesnar. One is Brock Lesnar versus Batista. And I know some people out there are saying, Batista, Batista sucks, he's a terrible wrestler, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, Batista is a huge superstar, not just in the WWE world, but in mainstream Hollywood. He is, he is garnering a lot of success right now with his movies, and he is a bona fide movie star now. So Brock Lesnar versus Batista, whether the match is any good or not, that's not the point. The point is, it is a blockbuster match. It is um, two larger-than-life characters, the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. And I think it's a match that needs to happen at some point. Now, like I said on our uh, characters that didn't get enough a chance show, wrestling fans are the most fickle motherfuckers on the planet. People seem to forget that Batista, before he beat Triple H, was regarded as a great, dominant big man. Yeah. And he was good in the ring. He never really got bad in the ring, I don't think, personally. And this is my opinion. Yeah. Batista is a decent worker. Yes. And Brock, Brock won the NCAA fucking championship, okay? He's a great wrestler. These two guys can have a solid, not just two big men going, er, 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 wrestling match. And if it's not about the championship, like it has been with other stuff with Brock, if it's about sheer pride, the fact that both of them debuted in 2002, both of them came up from OBW, we've seen Brock versus Cena. We've seen Orton versus Batista. We've seen the OVW, the OVW class have matches. But we've never got the definitive Brock-Batista fight. Right. Let's have that fight out. Let's see which of the dominant big men from OVW that came up at the same time really has a dominant hand. Yeah, and the other obvious one is Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton. And same thing you mentioned. Both of them were exactly. in OVW together, and both of them have been major superstars over the past decade plus. Yep. Just makes sense to do that match at some point. Yeah, see, Brock, Brock Cena... Brock will forever say, and I tend to agree, Cena's rise came at Brock's departure. And then Brock came back and owned Cena's ass. <laughs> Orton rose at the same time while Brock was gone. In Japan and in UFC and doing the other things he was doing. But now Brock's back. He's the king of the jungle again. Even when he's gone, people are still waiting for him to come back. They cannot wait for him and Paul to walk down an aisle again and pick a next target. What if it's Orton or Batista? It'd be great. Yeah. And uh, moving on here, another guy who has been a major part of WWE lately is the vigilante Sting. Now that Sting is part of WWE, I know what happened at WrestleMania, I wasn't a big fan of him losing to Triple H. I know you weren't either. You know, I, 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 mean, I haven't asked you this in two months. You paid to go see that show. You paid to drive up there and see that show live. And one of the drawing points of that show was Triple H Sting. Was it hard for you to sit in the crowd going... Really? As it was for well, me at home? Live in person, it was like, oh my god, NWO, DX, this is awesome. You know, that's the reaction when you're watching it live. Well, but, but other than the three of the Outsiders and DX coming down. Well, every, everyone, everyone was enjoying the match until Triple H won, and then, like, just the place went completely silent when yeah, Triple yeah, H won. Yeah, so did my house. <laughs> but, anyways, <laughs> anyways um, as long as you got Sting now, he's. he's affiliated with the company now, you might as well take full advantage of it. People have been talking about Sting versus John Cena as a match. You know, Sting was one of the biggest stars of WCW, the franchise of WCW against the WWE franchise, John Cena. That is a logical dream match to do. Maybe you could do it at SummerSlam. Maybe you could even do it at WrestleMania. But uh, one possibility for WrestleMania, which has gotten a lot of speculation, is Sting versus The Undertaker. Sting came out the night after Raw, 
and the fans started loudly chanting Undertaker. So that's mm -hmm. clearly what fans want to see. Um, and I, I think Sting needs a couple of matches before Undertaker. I think he needs at least one or two wins. You know, I don't want to see him go 0-2 in his WWE career. He needs, yeah. a, he needs a win. And John Cena can lose to Sting. I mean, I, I don't know if Vince, Vince's ego will allow that to happen, but I, I, I think that would be a cool thing to do for Sting and his character. I'm glad you brought up Sting. There's two guys you didn't mention that I would like to see. If And one of them's not realistic. It's not going to happen, but I won't talk about it anyway. If Bret Hart was healthier, we never really got that definitive, decent Bret Sting match in WCW. Yeah. Bret was still so jaded and so just bitter about the way he was treated in both companies that he never really did anything really solid there at WCW. But him and Sting could have been something special. And they didn't do it. They blew it. The other one that is, if they can get the other participant to come back and commit to it, is Sting versus The Rock. Absolutely. Talk about a franchise versus franchise match. Even in The Rock's absence, he's still a franchise player in WWE. You know, he still gets promoted on WWE.com for doing lip sync battles with Jimmy fucking Fallon. Okay? You know, Sting vs. The Rock could be a great draw. Maybe that could be a WrestleMania match or a SummerSlam match or a big show match. But yeah, Sting or Taker has to happen. Yeah, and there's, there's, there, there's a few matches you can do with The Rock. I mean, you can do Rock versus Sting. You can do Rock versus Randy Orton, third generation star versus third generation star, one on one. I know they had the match at WrestleMania. Right, I was going to say, but then again, Orton pinned Foley in that match. That was the story, was Orton versus Foley. Rock and Flair and Batista were just kind of like parsleys on this plate. It was The, the meat of that match was Orton and Foley. Um, but Rock Orton's never been truly done one-on-one. -on -one. That'd be a great... Sh especially with Orton being the guy now that's like the, the elder statesman. He's been around for 10 years. And yeah. He's kind of there to just kind of pop in for a big match and have a big right. feud when he needs to. He doesn't need a big old win every time. Neither does Rock. Right. So it'd be a good, solid match. Yeah. And then uh, you, can, you can do the Rock and Ronda Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie, the tag team match, which they kind of planted the seeds for. And I think that if you're going to have Ronda Rousey involved in a match at WrestleMania, and that's still a big question mark at this point. But if she's there, you might as well do the tag team match. I, I don't really want to see Ronda versus Stephanie. To me, that's not a dream match. The dream match is... Ronda versus Stephanie is a freaking lamulet of slaughter. Yeah, it, it's the, the tag match, the mixed tag match, I think that is the real draw, and that's the match that people would want to see. If, if, if Dana White could just sit back for a second and look at the possibility of the most successful pay-per-view company in history, the WWE, promoting the top star in his company. I don't care who the fuck's champion there besides Ronda. Nobody gives a shit outside of the UFC fandom about UFC except Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Ronda Rousey is the most over person in that entire organization. And if she is partnered with WWE doing stuff at Hell in a Cell in October, at WrestleMania in Texas, and various things, Dana White can just watch the, the mainstream crossover publicity money roll in. Come on, Dana. I know you're watching. Everybody else watches our show. Yeah. Damn it. And uh, speaking of big money matches, matches that if booked properly could be huge, um, I want to bring up the Shield triple threat, which um, we have the match at Payback. You know, that was a fatal four-way. But right. fans want to see the three guys go at it, and I'm hopeful that one of these days we'll get to just see the three guys going at it. No shenanigans, just the three Shield members to, to, to determine who the best member of the Shield was. and uh, now, Would you want to see some sort of cage around them or, some, or, just, or just turn them loose well, with, a good, with a good story, I don't even think you need a stipulation. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I, again, Ambrose is the least technical of the three. He didn't come up through the system like Rollins did, like Reigns did. You know, he came from like CZW and like the hardcore independence where he was getting sliced and diced three times a week. Yeah. Rollins has that pedigree, no pun intended, Hunter, of you know, coming from the Indies, from Ring of Honor, being Ring of Honor World Champion. Let's not forget that. You know, and then Roman's got the, the family pedigree. And these three guys are all solid and tremendous in their own right, and they don't need Orton in there like they had at Payback to have a solid match. Right. Orton's great. He's one of the best ever. But these three guys are the future. Yeah. And they need to be turned this on their own. Exactly. And uh, one more match I want to mention here, and you can add any that you okay. want, want to. Um, I wanted to mention this. Hopefully it happens. It's, it's a big question mark. You know, there's a lot of factors. 
I'd like to see Daniel Bryan versus Samoa Joe in a WWE ring. That would be incredible. I think for indie fans, that would be a dream come true to see that match take place at an event like WrestleMania. I just had a moment. Um, <laughs> oh, really, Jeff? I, God, Bryan, and you know what? Let him use his own name that one night. Brian Danielson. I don't think that's going to happen. It should, though. And we'll be lucky if Samoa Joe Samoa Joe. <laughs> right. Well, Hunter, Hunter has always liked Joe. Yeah. So I think that, that he might get to keep his name. I mean, they've mentioned him on WWE DVDs even. Yeah. So we'll see. But then again, they made Chris Hero cash his own house, so, you know, whatever. Um, if Daniel Bryan and Samoa Joe had a match at WrestleMania or at SummerSlam or some sort of stipulation pay review where they have to do something different, that could be awesome. I like to personally see. You know, you talk about indie matches. We had Punk Bryan finally happen. Yeah. We finally ha we could have Joe Bryan if Bryan gets healthy again. You know, we've had a taste, just a taste of Rollins and Bryan. But if they had him on pay per view for the championship, that'd be great. Um, I'd like to see. You know, they they've got a few indie guys. I I really would love if they would. Properly, properly elevate Zayn and Owens. Yeah. And have them go on big, WWE stage. On a big stage. On like a big WrestleMania. stage. Granted, the TakeOver events are tremendous. And they had a great match at TakeOver Rival. But, you know, it, it's so funny. I, I had a guy on a Facebook page say that Kevin Owens is his favorite wrestler right now. Favorite heel right now. Yeah. It's like you and I could personally... Go back in our history and see how truly dark Kevin Steen can get. If he would go anywhere near that WWE, people would vilify him. He is one twisted motherfucker. <laughs> he is. He's twisted. And people are liking the same they like the character because he's he's sticking true and he's not admitting that it's personal between him and Zayn is a bad business. Like, no, this is watered down Kevin Steen. If Kevin, if Kevin would embrace his dark side like I know he can, he could be the top heel in WWE, not just NXT right oh, now. Oh, definitely. So him against anybody in the company. Another person from NXT, if they elevate her, Charlotte against Natty on the big stage. There you go. Charlotte against another family dynasty, Naomi, on the big stage. Charlotte against uh, uh, Tamina. Charlotte against any decent worker on the roster could be Big bucks. And really elevate the Divas division back to where it should be. The women's division, excuse me, where it should be. Charlotte is that good. And I didn't think, people always thought that Reed Flair would be the Flair that would carry on the name. And unfortunately he passed away and that sucks. Then they had David in the business for a while, but David never really wanted to. Ashley, Charlotte, she wants to. And she's so good. It bothers me that... I, I can just see them calling her up and just... Yeah. But if they have to do it right, she could take on anybody in the company. Yeah, if they built it up properly, a, a, a Divas Dream Match could be a reality and, and could be could be big box office. If I would love to see WWE do what TNA does and have like the one and only things, the network exclusive, and let their Divas against like the NXT Divas. Right. That way they can go... Wow, these girls from Florida are actually really good. They're kicking our girls' ass. Yeah. Maybe we should call these girls up. Yeah. I had a whole list. I was going to do it with you, but I didn't, I didn't have a chance. Of like every WWE diva on the main roster and go, okay, she's useless. Take her out. NXT girl in. Useless. It, just everybody. Rosa gone. Uh, <laughs> just Cameron gone. Just everybody just gone. And NXT girls filled in. Then I remember NXT has no divas left if I do that. Yeah. And I like watching NXT every week because of the divas. So. Just hopefully in due time. The divas will, will be brought in and they will be put well, to good use. Hopefully Give Divas a Chance won't be relegated as AJ's battle and actually be thought about. Yeah, and I don't know if that battle's already lost now because she's gone from the company. No, it's like, so awful. People are like, whatever, whatever. She, she as a long-time with... proponent of women's wrestling like I've been, I, I just want these girls to be showcased. And it bothers me that they're not. It bothers me. Yeah. Jeff has a dream, ladies and gentlemen. I do. I have a dream. I'm going to win the lotto and start a women's company. That's what I'm gonna do. There you go. So that'll wrap and, it and up. Me book. Yeah, that'll wrap it up for our thoughts on uh, dream matches. the top yes. dream matches that should happen in the world of WWE, and we'll see what happens in the, the coming months and Maybe years. These two. Um, 
if Hogan actually gets his back at knees scored. Oh, yeah, Hulk Hogan. You really want to see Hogan versus Cena? Is that a dream match you want to see? Um, no. I think it's too late. I, I, you know what? If, if Hogan's body could reverse about 10 years, him versus Austin and him versus Cena would be tremendous. I mean, it, it's possible. I mean, Hogan could do one more match, but should he do one more match? Well, no, because he, he's, he's had so much back treatment and everything, the slightest lay drop landing the wrong way, and he's going out of their wheelchair. Straight up. Yeah. It's, I, I don't want Hogan's legacy to be that he stayed too long. Right. I, I, I love Ric Flair. That's what happened to him. Yeah, exactly. So when we talk about the dream matches, we talk about matches that not only are possible to happen, but could actually deliver in the ring also and live right. up to the expectations. And Hogan versus anybody would not because people want, people want 1987 Hulk Hogan, and they're not going to get that. Right. So uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think, what matches you would like to see, which dream matches you want to see happen in the world of WWE, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.